How's everybody doing? My name is Anthony Brian Logan, and today I bring you an update on the Nashville RV bombing. Now, the FBI, local police, state police, they had, I think, 60 or more agents out there to figure out what was going on, who did what and why. And they were able to discover that a 63-year-old man by the name of Anthony Quinn Warner from Antioch, Tennessee, which is right there in the Nashville area, is the guy responsible for the blast, and he himself died in the blast. Like I was saying in the previous video, it probably was a suicide. He probably was the only guy that was there that got harmed because the RV pulled up to downtown Nashville right around 1.30 a.m. Christmas morning. And like I was saying, this is probably not a self-driving vehicle, and I didn't see anybody get out of the vehicle in any pictures or video, so he probably was in there the entire time while he was playing the warning track they said, if you can hear this, evacuate now. And then there was also a song called Downtown. I forget who the artist was, but I'll place it on the screen before you. And that was the music that was playing in between the warning to evacuate. And some of the lyrics were, if you're lonely, life's getting you down, you can always go downtown. And the guy, uh, Warner, was described as kind of a loner, a homebody, a computer guru, self-employed. He would just tend to his pets and stay to himself. So he wasn't really a guy that anybody knew like that. He was just kind of a, a, a loner guy. So he took his RV downtown Nashville, rigged it up, and then killed himself and also took out really almost an entire city block of downtown Nashville. Uh, they don't know if it was a, a thing to target police because that was a a suspicion because, okay, the RV goes down and then there's audio tracks. There's several audio tracks playing. There's the song called Downtown. Then there was the Evacuate Now. And then also there may have been gunshots that were pre-recorded. So the guys inside the RV playing the gunshots to attract the police. And then when the police get there, they hear the whole thing about Evacuate. So the police did just that. There were six officers. Shout out to them because... They put themselves in harm's way. They went door to door, evacuating apartments and businesses just to make sure that nobody was around this RV that eventually did blow up. The RV got there right around 1.30 a.m. and the bomb went off at 6.30 a.m. Christmas morning. So I'm glad that nobody was hurt except for the guy that was driving. He did that to himself, so it is what it is. That's on him. Now, the question here is, what was the reason why he went down to that specific part of Nashville and that part of downtown? Why? Is it because he wanted to kill himself in the blaze of glory, have a bunch of attention on himself? Or was it because he was trying to impact some, some infrastructure, some critical infrastructure? AT&T is still kind of spotty right now. Right when it happened, like AT&T was out. If you had an AT&T phone anywhere close to Nashville, even out here where I'm at in East Tennessee, there was no AT&T service at all. People trying to call my phone and blowing it up. They, you know, it's, I, I didn't even realize it wasn't even working. No actual cell phone tower service to AT&T phones. All right. And that same thing could be said for other parts of the state, maybe even as far as Georgia, Kentucky, et cetera. 9-1-1, that was messed up. A lot of different things were impacted by this. I think AT&T did a press conference and they're talking about some services may be down for 30 days, you know, because it also impacted ATMs. It impacted uh, certain stores like um, like online ordering. All kind of stuff was affected by the blast because there was some kind of node center right there in downtown. Now, there's some conspiracies talking about, oh, well, it was a missile. It was a military strike. I don't know anything about that. The footage I saw, and I'll place that in the box, it just shows the RV blowing up, all right? And I thank God that no officers were hurt because in the video, there was one officer who was kind of walking around very close to where the RV was at. Not right, not right up on it, but close enough to where the blast would have affected him. Maybe some shrapnel, maybe even just the noise or something like that, the heat. It could have definitely damaged him. So luckily, he was not caught up in the blast. And luckily, those that were around were not caught up in the blast as well. Now, there was one guy, and I think it was in Wilson County, which is right next to Nashville, I think to the north and the east of Nashville. I think it might have been Route 231 or something close to that. This guy decided to park his RV on an interstate playing some of the similar sounds that the other guy played from his RV. 
It's like, man, look, we don't have no time for that. You got to go to Gitmo immediately. Make big rocks and the little rocks, okay? We don't have any time for your shenanigans, all right? This guy out here did that, blew up a whole city block, put a lot of people in danger. You're damaging critical services, infrastructure, cell phones, all this and that. And the third, here you are, like, copycatting, trying to do the same thing. No. So the federal rallies, local police or whatever, they snatched him up immediately. And like I said, they need to put him in Gitmo right now. I'm talking about waterboarding, do whatever they got to do. Um, if you are seeing these things happen, do not be a copycat. All right, just just don't do it. I don't care if it's a prank. It's a YouTube thing. Don't do it because the trial you're going to get is not going to be fair. All right. It is not going to be fair because people are already on edge. That's like... If you were to try and imitate a DC, DC sniper back when that was going on, it, the entire like Northern Virginia was gripped in fear because DC sniper was going around just, you know, indiscriminately doing things. So you can't do stuff like that and get away with it. All right. Normally, when that would have happened, you just happen to be stopping on the interstate playing sounds. You might not have a whole lot happen to you. But when you do that in this context, oh, you're going to the penitentiary, you're going to the hokey right now, pronto. But I don't think there's going to be anything more that comes of this. Um, they're, they're calling the guy a suicide bomber. That's true, but at the same time, it's kind of false because a suicide bomber, in a traditional sense, is the kind of person that would run up in a crowded area, you know, a lot of wah wah, and then just blow himself up, right? And hurt a lot of people while he's doing it, while hurting himself, killing himself. All right. That's generally how that goes. This was not really like that. Yes, it was a bombing that. Resulted in a suicide, but it was more of a, you know, I'm not trying to hurt people. Maybe I'm trying to hurt myself, get some attention, and also hurt infrastructure. That's probably what they're going to find as they investigate. It's probably still an ongoing investigation. We don't know if anybody else was involved. Probably not, though, because like I said, this guy was um, a computer, quote unquote, guru, self employed, loner, the typical type. And when you have the loner types that stay to themselves and don't really have connections, they generally don't have connections to engage in violence either. It's usually a self-motivated thing. That's that's typically how that goes. So I don't think there's going to be much more we learn of this, but um, maybe there will be. Maybe we will find out that this was something greater than just this guy. Maybe he was just used as sort of a patsy, sort of a proxy tool to have certain things happen. Um, I was hearing about Dominion Systems collaborating with AT&T to um, inspect some of them uh, voting machines. I don't know if that's true or false. I've heard that, but I don't know that to be true. All that I do know is that the guy was from Antioch, Tennessee, which is right there in the Nashville area. He drove downtown, blew himself up, hurt infrastructure, and there is probably still an ongoing investigation. There's a lot of things that have come from this, copycats and everything else, but don't do that. If you value your life and your freedom, just stay above board. Don't try to be a smart guy, wise aleck, or crack any kind of jokes, make any kind of pranks right now at this time. But I think I'll leave that right there for now. And what say you? Do you think that this guy, Anthony Quinn Warner, was acting on his own by himself, or was there a greater network involved here? Whatever your thoughts on that are, let me know in the comments below. Uh, do you think that you'll see copycats like this across the nation? Because, you know, somebody said it could have been a test. Because what if you damage infrastructure? What if you disrupt communication? When you're talking about war with China and other nations, it won't really be a ground war, in my humble opinion. It'd be about hurting satellites, hurting infrastructure, you know, hurting cell phones and ways you communicate, ways to be able to make money and, you know, rescind and receive money. Disrupting uh, transport, air and rail and road, you know, having the country go off the rails. It's not even about just fighting individual people or the military fighting each other. It's about the whole country being disrupted. It could have been a test. It's like I did a while back with the whole food stamp thing. Remember that uh, food stamps are awful like half a day and you almost had riots break out in stores because of half a day of food stamp disruption and it probably wasn't even on the first imagine the food stamps went out for like two days on the first of the month oh my goodness or if they didn't refresh on the appropriate time 
Like, let's say they refresh on the 31st of the month and they don't refresh and you have no money at all, no food at all. And your whole way of doing, you might be out there hustling food stamps, whatever you got going on with EBT, with TANF, et cetera. What if it didn't work for a week right when you needed it? Oh, man, it'd, it'd be crazy. And when they did that for like half a day, whether it was a outage happened to happen by happenstance or it was on purpose, they were able to see what would happen if it went down for an extended period of time. It was just an accidental, quote unquote, study about that. So maybe that thing that happened in Nashville was the same thing. I have no idea. I think either way, people that are, you know, kind of important people that make these things happen as far as communication or disrupting it. They're looking at that. They're looking at the reaction that was that 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 happened and they're studying it for the future. I just hope that it does not happen again and most certainly not anytime soon. But whatever your thoughts are. Please let me know in the comments below. And that's all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Peace.